Hi everyone, I am very excited to bring you a new brand. It is called Kaja Cosmetics. It's spelled K-A-J-A, but it's not Kaja, it's Kaja. It is a um, creation between, apparently, Sephora and Mimi Box. If you are a longtime viewer of this channel, uh, years ago I would review and unbox Mimi boxes, which were very cool. I don't think they're doing boxes anymore, but they are getting into the business of creating makeup like this brand. So uh, they're a K-beauty retailer. I'm going to read a little bit from, um, what is this, PR Newswire about the brand. So it's an exclusive partnership with Sephora to create the next generation in color cosmetics to the U.S. market. Kaja, meaning let's go in Korean, is the first co-developed K-beauty brand with Sephora. Created for the girl on the go, Kaja provides bite-sized, covetable beauty products powered by the latest Korean technology and formulation. So make sure you check the description box below to where you can find this brand if you are interested in purchasing any of these items, as well as a link to Ebates because if you make any sort of online purchase, not just through Sephora, you can get at least some cash back on your order, as well as taking advantage of whatever sales there are for that specific website. All right, so I have almost all of the products available in the line to apply and review for you. So please remember to subscribe to the channel. All of the relevant links will be in the description box below. And let's get to applying these new makeup products. All right, I have already applied foundation and primer since those are not products that the company offers. We're going to first apply eyeshadow, which comes in a box that looks like this. These are the Beauty Bento Bouncy Shimmer Eyeshadow Trios. These retail for $21 each, and there's four different shade combinations that you can purchase. The one that I will be using and applying today is 02 Orange Blossom. And this is the little compact, stacked compact that it comes in there, very teeny tiny. The description on the website says, these curated trios come packaged in a bite-size bento compact. Each shadow features a different prismatic shade with glitter arrangement technology for uniform shimmer in every swipe. Perfect for life on the go. They'll take you from day to night. And it says that the best way to apply these is with your fingers. I will attempt to do that, but I guess they are all shimmery, so I'm going to probably have to balance these out with a matte shadow to put in the crease. So the top shade here is called Sandy Peach. The middle shade is Sunkissed Tan. And the bottom shade is Baked Cinnamon. And that trio is described as a golden toned trio. First, I'm just going to apply a matte shade, obviously not provided by the trio there. I'm just gonna put a matte shade through the crease before I start applying the shades from the actual product. I will go ahead and use my finger with the middle shade and apply that to most of the lid. I'll leave the inner corner bare a little bit to try to put that lightest shade in there. This is really shimmery. I'd say glittery. It's probably more accurate. Applies very nicely with the fingers, but of course that's going to depend. I have a small lid space and I don't have teeny tiny fingers, so um, this is not a method of application that I use if I can avoid it. I am going to use a small brush to apply the top shade and I'm actually going to foil it. I'm going to spritz it with some spray and apply to the inner corner. Applies very well with a brush so at least for a foiled application you can do it with a brush just fine. Let's see how it goes if we use a fluffier brush with a dry application. I'm gonna put this in the outer corner there. If you notice the new Natasha Denona uh, Safari palette in my hand here, swatches for this will be coming up soon. So stay tuned. Definitely not a high impact application with a brush. Let's go back in with that flat synthetic one see if it's just the shade that's not super deep or if 
fits the application. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it is the color that's not super deep. Okay, I need to balance the shimmer out with some accenting and crease work. So again, with a matte, deeper brown shade, just gonna go through the crease here. And I am gonna put a little bit of that on the other corner too. Okay, so this is the finished eye look after I applied liner before mascara. You can see that it's definitely a softer look, which is more in line with Asian beauty brands and the style that Asian beauty brands usually have promoted. Um, there is definitely fallout. The intensity of the shimmer has also died down after application, so it's not as intense or vibrant or glittery as it was upon initial application. And in the under eye area, even like in my cupid's bow <laughs> around my nose, there's definitely flecks of glitter all around. So I am going to use a makeup wipe and clean that up, which unfortunately does remove the foundation that I've already applied, but this brand has a line of under eye concealer and brightener. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that. <laughs> you can see the contrast between where I used to have foundation in my under eye area and now I don't. But on that note, we're going to apply the Universal Under Eye Brightener. This is actually the Catnap Under Eye Brightener. It retails for $19. It's this one shade. The description for this says that this is a buildable formula that works to color correct dark circles so that you appear awake. It's a peach toned brightener. It comes with a, an angled doe footed applicator and it is definitely peach toned. So we're going to apply this first. I'm going to dab that in with a sponge. Okay, definitely. Wow, that's a beautiful color correction there compared to what you saw before I applied this. I'm really impressed by that actually. I think that worked really really well. It has blended into the skin in a really seamless way. You can't really see any layer of product on there. So that's wonderful. All right, on top of that, we are going to apply the Don't Settle um, Flexible and Seamless Concealer. This also retails for $19. Now this comes and it looks like 12 different shades. I would say that's a moderate offering um, in terms of being able to reach people of all ethnicities, skin tones, and skin depths. Definitely need a broader range to really cover the spectrum. It is an Asian brand, so I'm wondering if the concentration is more on people who are fair skinned. Obviously there are Asian people who are of deeper skin, but a majority of the population is more fair skinned. But since it's being sold in Sephora, with a huge um, American, North American population, I wonder if the company has thought about the fact that customers of Sephora um, will, there, uh, more of that population will have deeper skin tones and skin depths than what you would typically find in places like Japan or Korea. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. For the description for this product, again, we have that angled doe foot applicator. It says this is supposed to be medium coverage for all different skin types with a light as air feel, filtering out blemishes, dark circles, and more without caking or creasing. So I'll go ahead. You see, I have a little more darkness under this eye. That's always been the case. I had uh, chicken pox when I was really little. And then so I, when I was a little kid, I picked off a scab from a um, chicken pox kind of mark and it's forever left a darker scar under there. So let's compare one side to the other with the brightener underneath. Oh, and the shade that I am using is 04 Waffle. Wow, I don't think you need as much product as I applied there. Okay. 
I'm gonna tap it in also with my finger. Again, it has a really beautiful seamless finish on the skin. It's almost undetectable. So there's the difference between this eye, wow, and this eye. Um, I think this eye looks even small because the darkness under here has not been covered up the way this one has. Let's try to correct that a little bit. All right, and there you have it applied under both eyes. I really like this product. It looks like it will be a great concealer. Let's go ahead and try to conceal some blemishes. I've been breaking out a lot recently and I'm not really sure why, but let's go ahead and try to cover these up. Okay, I applied mascara, so now let's move on to the brows. This is the Brow Blowout Fiber Gel Brow Definer, which retails for $16. It comes in four shades. I picked up the shade Too Soft Brown, and you get a tiny cone-shaped uh, mascara wand. The description says that this fiber gel definer helps create a full feathery look for an amped up blowout effect without flaking or smudging. It has a really interesting scent. Not sure what that is. Oh, it has fragrance added to it. That's a little strange. Don't know why I would want my brows to smell like fragrance, but probably don't have to go into that rant for most of my veteran viewers out there. This is a very nice shade match um you, unless you have truly black brows black black hairs on your brows like deep black um you probably want to stick with soft brown and not go deeper than that really like this actually the feathery strokes are really easy to produce with this wand there isn't a an overabundance of product on the wand like you get with some other brow mascaras. That was quick and easy. I really liked that and appreciate that. There you go. So there are two different blush products. So I'm gonna do that silly thing where I apply one to one cheek and the other to the other cheek and hope that it doesn't look too crazy. Uh, we're gonna start with the Cheeky Stamp. A blendable blush. This retails for $24. There's a total of four shades and I picked up the shade 02 Saucy. Did I say this retails for $24? It retails for $24. It says, show cheeks some love with this cushion blush that deliver, de <laughs> delivers a crush worthy flush. For best use, twist the top to reveal the heart shaped, whoa, heart -shaped sponge. It kind of popped out there. Okay, so you can see it's a stamp applicator. Then pop open the bottom and, oh, it has a little film that you have to remove. All right, and then press the applicator into the cushion compact. Ooh, very cute. Stamp once for natural looking glow and twice for a bold pop of color. It says that the cushion blush formula with the heart shape applicator blends out to a sheer to buildable flush of color. All right, it seems like a lot of product on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then I don't know if you're supposed to blend it out with your fingers, uh, but I'm going to take a duo fiber brush. I'm gonna clean it off a little more before I do that to blend it out. Hopefully it didn't wait too long did dry a little bit in those few seconds so i'm gonna go ahead and take my finger i didn't press all the way down so i feel like this is not exactly a sheer flush of color if you want that be super light-handed with it okay now i do have a few blemishes there but that's pretty much what the blush looks like with a light layer i'm going to go ahead instead of stamping this on my cheek i'm gonna pick up some of the color a little more on the brush and build it up like that. Yeah, you can definitely get a strong flush of color with this. I don't feel like this, oof, 
don't feel like this formula is super easy to blend out in a smooth and even manner. Okay, that's what we have there. I don't really want to play around with it too much more. And then the other thing about this product is once you're done with it, you're putting it back into this packaging and you're pressing it down. That stamp kind of presses down or compacts and then you twist it. So you're gonna, when you reopen it, I don't know. It just seems like it's gonna get pretty dirty and grimy over time. All right, the other blush product is the Mochi Pop Bouncy Blendable Blush. This retails for $19, and there are a total of three shades in this range. We picked the shade 02 Atmosphere. Oh my gosh, these look like macrons. I don't know how you pronounce it, because there's macaroons, which are the coconut kind of spheres with chocolate on them, and then there's macrons, I think that's how you pronounce it. Correct me in the comments below. But anyway, it looks like those, one of my favorite uh, dessert treats. So this is what the compact looks like. This is a cream to powder blush that adds an effortless pop of color on the go. Got a cute little opening here, the mirror inside, and that's what the shade looks like. It says innovative powder to gel highlighter feels like powder gel highlighter. I don't know why it says that there, but anyway, feels like a cream and finishes like a powder. So after cleaning this duo fiber, duo fiber brush off, I am going to see if this works here. Looks like it. Applying it to this side of the cheeks. See, this gives you a lot more control and it blends out really nicely. You're getting a sheer layer there at first. Let's see how much we can build it up. You could probably also use your fingers for straight application on this one, but I really almost always prefer to use a brush like this. See, you can intensify it. And then for the edges, I'll oftentimes use my finger. It's a more even and smooth. I wouldn't say the most smooth and even of the cream blushes that I've tried, but I think compared to this side, it's a lot better. Okay, on top of the cheeks, we're going to apply the Mochi Glow Bouncy Blendable Highlighter. These also retail for $19, available in four different shades. We have here shade 01 Toy Alien, same kind of packaging as the bouncy blushes. And that's what Toy Alien looks like in the pan. This is a sparkling white gold. The description says this is a powder gel highlighter. I guess they just copy and pasted for the gel description that feels like a cream and finishes like a powder. So I'm gonna take a smaller duo fibered brush so that I can concentrate this on the top, tops of the cheekbones. Oh wow, that glitter is pretty chunky. Let's press it out with the fingers. So it definitely becomes a little more natural when you press it in with your fingers, but the glitter is on the chunkier side, so not my particular favorite in terms of formula. So because there's no bronzing or contouring products in the line, I have gone ahead and used my Kat Von D shade and contour light, whatever the thing's called, to do that. The last step is going to be for the lips. Now, I'm gonna have to get a little creative here because there's three different lip products. One is a lip stain, the other is a lip liner, and the other is a color changing lip moisturizer. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the stain. Then on top of that, I'll put the lip liner, and then on top of that, I will put the lip changing moisture, color changing moisturizer. Nix that. I thought the lip stain was going to be like a water stain, but looking at the description, it's a liquid lipstick. Not the same thing. So we're going to change the order. We are going to start with 
the Color Changing Lip Moisturizer. I'll show you what that looks like um, on my bare lips. These are bare lips right now. And then maybe I'll swipe that off and then do the lip liner and then the lip stain on top. So on that note, this is the Mood Balm Color Changing Lip Moisturizer, retailing for $14 and available in four different shades, although you technically get two shades with each product. So maybe a total of eight shades. Anyway, this shade is 03 Late Night. It's supposed to shift between like a fuchsia and a deeper um, purplish color. It says, it says fuchsia to pink. So that's what it looks like in the tube. Very interesting. So the description says, what you see isn't what you get with this lip balm. The formula reacts with your body temperature, creating a unique shade that's all you. The result, a custom wash of color and a sheer lustrous finish. It's not a custom color. It's just a color that changes and shifts. It's not going to be different. Uh, you're not gonna get a different shade for every single person. It's just, you know, the way with any lip color would look slightly different on any different person. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and apply. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a super sheer wash. Um, there's a second layer applied. This feels very comfortable on the skin. Beautiful feeling, just like a lip balm. Uh, but of course you're getting this flush, very nice, strong flush of color on the lips. No stickiness, no tackiness, very moisturizing. And you do get a little bit of a staining effect, which is in my book, a bonus. So we're gonna move on to the lip liner. This is the Two's Company Nude Lipstick and Liner Duo. Is that what I got? Oh shoot, this is getting even more complicated because now we have a lipstick on top of this. How are we gonna do this, guys? Okay, I'm gonna do the lip liner with the lipstick on top and then we'll wipe that off and then I'll apply the liquid lipstick for you at the end. This one retails for $16. We picked up the shade 01 Ghost Flower and there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, combinations available to you. So on the one end, the thicker end, which of course I just nicked, is a um, lipstick pretty brownie, rosy brown. And on the thinner end, you have a lip liner. So let's go ahead. Oh yeah, this is definitely a brownie, uh, a brown based nudie mauve shade. The shade description on the website says light toned rose. Don't know if I would agree with that. Mm, I would wear this lip liner by itself. It has more of a gel feel than a straight uh, wood pencil feel that you get out of a wood pencil, so that's nice. Um, not too much tugging or having to press super hard. Let's go over. Oh, can you see? It's a little more, the lipstick is more gray toned, which I actually do not like. Can you see the difference between the grayish toned top and just the lip liner on the bottom? So I personally would just want to wear the lip liner, but different skin tones look better with different shades. Okay, so there is Ghost Flower applied. And last, but hopefully not least, is the Cushy Vibe Full Pigment Moisturizing Lip Stain. This retails for $18 and is available in six different shades. We picked up the shade 02 Silk Robe. Ooh, I love this packaging. Um, I love the other packaging too, but the description for this says this is a liquid lip color that features water capture technology to help retain lips moisture for matte color that actually feels comfortable all day. Ooh, it's a pinched doe footed applicator. And this shade is described as a mauve rose. I think it's a very deep mauve rose. 
Whoa. The feeling of this is unlike any liquid lipstick that I've ever used. feels incredible on the lips. I don't even know how to describe this. It feels, I mean, you've heard people describe a lip product as being pillowy, but this really feels like your lips have become pillows. It is super, super soft and luxurious. That is an amazing feel. I, I definitely agree with the description that it will be unlike any liquid lipstick or pigment that you've ever tried. It's super comfortable. I'm gonna let this set and go around for five to 10 minutes to see if it changes significantly and I will check back in in a little bit. All right, it has been 10 minutes and the consistency has not changed. This feels so comfortable and luxurious. It is the kind of product where you can tell something is on your lips, so it's not like a water stain where it's just undetectable and weightless. But especially for the winter, I think this is going to be a fantastic product if you want to continue wearing liquid lipsticks, opaque, a strong color, but there is zero drying or puckering of the skin on your lips, which is pretty incredible. Oh, one thing, let's see. Ah, okay, so unlike most liquid lipsticks, I guess the give and take is that it's not uh, that transfer proof, but I would rather take this and still have plenty of product left on my lips as opposed to getting really pruny, dried out lips with a liquid lipstick. This is the completed look with all of the products that I showed you applied. I am so happy to say that I am very impressed by this new brand. Um, I am always pretty skeptical when a new brand comes onto the market. Usually more, I say more often than not, they flop, they don't make it. Um, I really hope that this brand succeeds and that it becomes popular and they come out with more products. Not that everything was A+, plus, but there are a lot of very impressive products and I think a couple of very unique products in the line. First thing is, I love the packaging. This is one of my favorite colors, but even with the uh, one standout product, or I guess the blushes too came in different colors, but most of the products come in this kind of minty green color, but the packaging is sleek. It's really nice, um, kind of minimalist and chic. So that's first. I would say the product I am least impressed by is the stamp blush. It's just too gimmicky. I don't think it actually performs that well. The eyeshadow trio, I actually like a lot. I do love how shimmery this um, look is. I did say that the shimmer died down, which is true. Nonetheless, it is still pretty glittery on the lids, but I just think that um, the inclusion of one matte shade would have really elevated this product to shimmering and then one matte would have helped you be able to make an eye look with just this instead of having to reach for a whole different product. The uh, highlighter, I think I would also say I wasn't too stoked about, but that may be because of this particular color. I don't know because I haven't tried out the other colors. Um, I think the blush is nice quality, although I don't think it's anything particularly unique in terms of other cream blushes out on the market. Clearly the thing that I was most impressed by was the lip stain, which I am going to buy the other shades in this range because I love, love, love that formula. Um, the balm was also very nice and pleasant to wear. The lip liner and lipstick also very nice and pleasant to wear. The under eye brightener and concealer, I love the formula on that. It still has not creased or looked cakey. It looks very flawless on the skin. And even the brow mascara I was impressed by and really like the effect of. So a lot of very practical high quality items, but then also very unique and stand out, um, less expensive expected products in this line. So there is the overview for Kaja Beauty. I really hope that you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comment section below if you've tried out anything from the brand and what you think if you have. I hope this was helpful to you if you were interested or curious about these new products. Leave me a comment in the section 
below what you think about these products, uh, what you're most intrigued by, by this brand, etc. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video.